Hello and welcome to Critical Hit Wargaming. Today we're going to be speed painting some Blood Knights. We're going to be continuing our Revenant Legion box set paint through. Uh, and today we're going to be doing our Vampire Knights in about 45 minutes. As always to start with we're going to need to undercoat our model. For this I've used two sprays. One of them is Mechanica Standard Grey. I've done that all over the model. And the other one I've used Grey Sear, the traditional contrast grey thingy and I've done that just from above literally the top 10 degrees just around the top of the model as you can see there that's literally the angle I've done it from everywhere else is Mechanica standard grey and that's given us some nice depth of shadow and highlights to start with first colour we want to use is Flesh Terror's Red Contrast. When you use contrast over the top of Zenithal uh, sprays or undercoating um, it really shows up because contrast only is as light or as dark as the colour that's underneath it so it works really really well. Now go around and paint all of the horse's armour but leave your rider uh, and we'll explain why shortly. And this is what your knight will look like up to this point. All of the armour on the horse is painted that nice deep flesh tear is red and it's looking great. When it comes to the rider you've got a choice now. You can switch to Blood Angels Red if you want your model to look more like the box art. However I find it a little bit strange that there's like an orangey red rider and a deep red horse. So I prefer the whole thing to look the same as it would if we were painting any other faction's knights. So I'm going to carry on with Flesh Tear as Red all over the armour. If you do use Blood Angels Red, the rest of the video still works, including the following dry brushing phase. So don't worry too much. The choice is completely yours. Make sure that when you start painting the face that you leave the little bit on the helmet where the chin is showing through. Just leave that grey sear. And here it is, the night up to this point, with the rider now painted. It's really important that when you're using Flesh Tear as Red that you have a good look around the model once it's dry to pick up on any areas that you've missed, because sometimes once it's dried, you will have missed a few spots here and there. So just cover them over again with Flesh Tear as Red and you're good to go. Next you're going to need to use Evil Sun Scarlet which is the next step up in red. I'm using a dry brush, we're going to add some extra colour and some extra highlights to this armour which is looking a little bit flat at the moment. But once this is done it's really going to bring out all of those edges and make it look a lot more red. With that done your armour will look like this which is a lot more vibrant, it's really really noticeable even that one layer of highlight. That's pretty much all we need to do to it so we'll leave the armour there and work on the rest of the horse. To do that we're going to need Black Templar and we're going to work around pretty much everything else you can see. We're going to paint all of the robes, all of the horse's barding, the horse's tail and the actual horse itself bar the face which is obviously skeletal. And here's your knight up till this point with all that black now dry. Looks a bit washed out in places but we're going to fix that momentarily before we start painting any highlights on the barding and on the leather straps hanging off the horse. Equip yourself with some Abaddon Black or Abaddon Black, however we're saying it in this video, and then paint over the barding to make it a nice solid black. Thankfully, because we've painted already with Black Templar, we don't need that thicker coat, so you can water your paint down a little bit more than you normally would to achieve the same result. Once all the black's dry, grab some Sons of Horus Green, which is a bit of an obscure colour to own, but suggest you pick some up if you're painting some soul blight grave lords because it's used in a lot of blacks as a highlight we're going to dry brush over the barding and over the leather straps and that's going to give us a kind of ghostly greeny black highlight which is exactly what we want be careful not to get it on your red however because it will look very strange so here's my highlighted black and also don't forget to do the highlighting on the lance as well. Next we're going to use Administratum Grey and we're going to do a very very fine highlight on just the most raised areas on the black to really bring out that detail. Now 
Morgas Bone comes next and we're going to use that to paint in the skeletal face on our Nightmare Steed. Next you're going to need Retributor Armour and Lead Belcher mixed at about 1 to 1 with a little bit more gold perhaps. Mix them together on a palette, add a little bit of water because when these two paints are mixed together it can become quite thick. So you want it to uh, be watered down slightly so you don't lose any detail. Then you're going to paint over all of the gold areas on your knight. It's going to vary from horse to horse. So just have a look at the model and anything you think should be gold, just uh, paint it gold basically. Just remember that less is more because you don't want the whole thing to be gold. For my model I'll be painting the winged bat thing on the front. I'll be painting a little bit on the shield the dangly like heads hanging off the bottom of the leather straps just to break up that black a little bit and then the big collar running round the back of the vampire's armour. Next grab some Rhinox Hide and we can use that to paint in the horses like armour straps. Um, the actual barding armour, so the leather straps with the gold icons on the bottom, I'm going to leave those black. Um, but the bits that are holding on the saddle and the armour to go around the horse, I'm going to paint those brown just to break up that black a little bit. Next we need lead belch, we're going to use that to paint in the metallic detail. So for this it's going to be the blade of the lance, it's going to be the little ringlets that uh, you can find dotted all over the armour. Uh, and the unicorn horn, for lack of better words, on the nightmare steed's armour. Oh and don't forget the stirrups. And here's where we are up till now. Most of it is painted, to be honest. We've got all the foundation colours there that we need. It's just a case of bringing out the detail a little bit more now. One quick step we need to do is to paint the vampire's face or what's showing of it on this model. And I'm going to just do that with a quick highlight of Pallid Witch Flesh. Shading time now, which is a cheap way to uh, get all that detail showing. And for this, we're going to use Agrax Earthshade to paint over all of the gold areas, all of the brown areas, and all of the bone areas. Next, you're going to need Known Oil, and it's exactly the same process. We're just going to be painting over all the metallic areas, like the stirrups and well, just the metallic areas. And once that's done, you're finished. Your Blood Knight is ready to go. It's good to get on the tabletop. All you need to do is base it to match the rest of your army. And, well, it's done. You kind of look at them and you think, these are relatively bland models. But actually, when they're all based up, they look pretty decent. And they look quite formidable, especially when they you've got five of them all together, um, just bouncing over units and chopping stuff up and inflicting mortal wounds everywhere. Nice models, especially compared to the old ones, which were, as far as I remember, fine cast, which was just awful. So good upgrade, nice models to have, and pretty easy to paint, especially if you're following this guide. As always, like, subscribe, leave comments with anything else you'd like to see, and I will endeavour to make them for you. Thanks for watching.